Hello, everyone, and welcome back. This is Dustin Meyer, and we are going to go over Lightroom CC 2019 and the built in HDR feature. So, they just released it. Um, Oh, probably about a month ago and I've been playing around with it. So finally I decided to make a video about it and let's just see if it's actually worth its snuff. So the first thing we've got here are five images that I got while I was at the Valley of Fire in Las Vegas not too long ago. As you can see, I do five exposures and each one of them are one stop apart. So this one here is the uh, regular exposure. Then we've got minus two, minus one, plus one, and plus two. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna select all, and we are gonna go down here to photo merge and HDR merge. Now, for those of you guys that are regular Lightroom Classic CC, or just classic, I guess, I can't remember, it's getting way too uh, confusing, so, you'll notice that this looks really similar. Uh, what it's doing right now is it's creating a preview as you can see right here. And I have it set to auto align and auto settings. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look and we're gonna see how it looks. Uh, one other option you can do if you've got birds flying by or some, some jerk walking around in your shots while you're doing multiple exposures. You can also click on the show ghost overlay and what that'll do is highlight in red some of the areas where you've got someone walking around and it'll work once if you have people or other objects that move around but from one spot to another so that they don't quite end up the same in each exposure. So anyways, we're gonna go over here to merge and it takes a little while, so let's just check and see how it does once it's finished. And it will create a stack, I think. It did it the last time I was testing it out, but we're gonna just click on hit enter and see how it looks. It's actually not that bad. And the nice thing about it is you can come over here and mess around with it, just make some adjustments. You can go up a little bit higher if you want, what I'm looking for over here is kind of what I call the ant hill in my histogram. If you can get it in the middle, then it will look pretty good. We've got some spikes over here in our different color channels just to kind of, you know, cause I, I don't know, white balance, but we can also bring the highlights down a little bit more if we want, bring up the shadows just a little bit. And so far it's, not looking that bad. What we might also want to do is go down to color and I don't know why it always brings up the vibrance, but I'm going to bring up the saturation just a tad bit more. And I'm also going to make sure it says Adobe landscape because I went ahead and made those changes before I actually started recording. And then we're going to go down to effects and we're going to maybe bring up the clarity just a little bit more uh, that I did before. We started and then do some sharpening. I usually just, whoa, excuse me. I usually just bring it right up to the middle because I like them nice and sharp. And then after that, optics, I'm shooting on the Nikon Z7, which is like 40 something megapixels. I can't remember, but that also explains why it took a little bit longer to process. And I'm gonna click on the heel slash clone button. I'm gonna click on that because it's kind of annoying. And I'm gonna go over here and I know some people say, well, that's not how it really looks. And I, in my, in my line of work, I don't really care because I just want it to look nice. That's how I pictured it in my mind and that's how I want it to look. So for those of you guys that just want a nice quick video, that's how it's done. And, but if for those of you that want to stick around, I'm going to show you guys what I do in Photoshop just to enhance it a little bit more. So next we're gonna open it up in Photoshop, go right click, edit in Photoshop. And this will probably take a while, so hang on just a second. Okay, we're still waiting. Any day now? Okay, you're making me look bad. So as you can see over here, what it does is it just creates kind of like a, a base layer. It's not the background, it's just a base layer. So I always label my layers because 
because, because reasons. And we're gonna call this one screen. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to go up here and go down to blur and go to Gaussian blur. And I find that if you have it, oh, around 15 or 20, or no, I'm sorry, 10, click OK. And then once it's done, we're gonna go over here and go down to screen. It'll kind of give you a little bit of a preview there. And then we're gonna go back down to background. We're gonna call this one multiply. And as you guys can probably guess, we're gonna blend it and it's gonna make it dark, but we're gonna go back to filter and we're gonna do the same kind of glossy, Gaussian, Gaussian blur. And as you can see, it's pretty dark and it's pretty blurry. So I'm gonna go over to opacity and I start with 50. Now keep in mind the multiply layer makes it dark. And then you can go over here to screen, which makes it bright. And we're gonna bring that down to 50. At least that's what I like to do. So I think that looks pretty good. Now this is called an Orton filter. I don't know why, but Anyways, it's one of those things that Trey Ratcliffe used a lot, especially in his earlier photos. If you don't know who he is, then where the hell have you been? I will put a link to his website down at the bottom so you can get some ideas where I got my inspiration from. And then what we do is you don't have to actually flatten the image. What you can do is go over here to save and then just close it. But what I'm gonna do is before I do that, Let's see, nope, that's select all. I'm gonna select all of these. I'm gonna duplicate the layers, sure, whatever, and I'm gonna flatten them. And then I'm just gonna warm it up a little bit more because if you later on try to warm it up uh, once you've done all these changes in Photoshop, then it will just flatten the image so you won't be able to go back and um, have the different layers and all that stuff. So what I'm also doing is if you noticed, I right clicked and did smart object because that way any changes that I make in camera raw, I can actually go back and make those changes again instead of making it a permanent change um, and all that good stuff. So then what I do is just go up to filter and go to camera raw and I'm just gonna warm it up in there. That way as it's a smart object, then I can go back and make the changes uh, without having a permanent layer. There we go, temperature, a little bit warmer, exposure, bring it down, pop some contrast. These are just my personal preferences. So if you're kind of like, oh, is this exactly how I have to do it? No. And then I'm gonna go over here to sharpen. Now that we've got all the changes that I want, if you notice over here in the smart object, if you double click that, it'll bring you back into camera raw and you can make adjustments uh, you know, it'll save the adjustments that you already made, but you can go back and change them without losing those changes. So I'm gonna save it and let's wait. It's a big file. All right, so it's saved. Then we're just gonna close it. We're not gonna close Photoshop. We're gonna just, we're just gonna close the file and then it's going to re-import the image back into Lightroom CC. And if you go back and you wanna make more changes, if you click on or right click on edit in Photoshop, it'll open it again in Photoshop as a layered file. I like the way this looks. We're gonna go and look at, well, we'll look at the original later. It looks kinda of like that. And now it looks like that. So anyways, all you gotta do now is just export the image, save it somewhere, wherever you want. And I think it looks pretty good. I might actually go in and just add a vignette a little bit later. Or what I can do is just go here, just to kind of get rid of some of that, you know, super brightness on the exterior here. But that's it. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. That's how you do HDR in Lightroom CC. They just, like I said, updated it about a month ago to have this feature. So I just wanted to see how it looked and see if you guys liked it. So either way, let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, I got some more promo codes down in the description from InView, which is my post production and printing and uh, album company, you know, online galleries, all that stuff. I've also got the same promo code for Portrait Professional, Pro Photo, or 
Portrait Pro, sorry. Uh, and, you know, so just go check out those goodies, do the trial version, all that good stuff. So thank you guys so much for watching. My name's Dustin Meyer, and I will see you in the next video.